Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomot, and I have a rant for you right now. But before I jump in, did a live session tonight with Ben Daniel from the Ben Daniel podcast. Ben, thank you so much for joining me tonight. That was a lot of fun. We had almost 500 people in the room, lots of back and forth, lots of comments. We appreciate it. Next week, 8 o'clock, I'll be on Ben's podcast. The Ben Daniel Podcast. So if you haven't subscribed to his channel yet, please do so now. But I presume most of you already have. Jumping on in. <clears throat> Excuse me. Cheryl Sousa had a lot to say about, or a lot to not say about Caitlin Clark. Last week, she chose to lead Caitlin Clark out of the conversation when discussing the Indiana Fever, talking about how great everyone else was, but didn't mention the best player on the team. That clearly is the reason that team goes. So Stephen A. Smith from First Take had his own commentary on Cheryl Swoops. He criticized her. Needless to say, he called it haterade. Said she's been snubbed, but Caitlin Clark's been snubbed by the media. He already called he called Cheryl Swoops a hater. And, and a whole lot of other stuff. I think he could have gone even harder, but what I really want to see from Stephen A. Smith is I want to see him do this on first take. I want to see him do this shit on ESPN. I don't want to simply see this on the Stephen A. Smith show on his podcast. ESPN has to be where this happens. And the reason it doesn't happen on ESPN is because ESPN has their narrative. They have their favorites. They have the one they want to protect. They have the one that they want to promote. That one being Angel Reese, <clears throat> along with her support crew of Monica, Drea, Chini, and Carolyn. But you got to do that crap on first take, Stephen A. You have to. You have to, you have to, you have to. So what just happened? Cheryl Soups went on a little tirade on X. She had a barrage of posts against Stephen A. Smith <coughs> where she responded to him calling her insane, which she absolutely is. Cheryl, I look forward to when you call me out. I am a nobody. I have made enough videos on you by now that I'm sure at least one of them have hit your hit, hit, hit your whatever. Heck, one of my videos hit Dana White, and Dana White's a whole lot more important than you, Cheryl Stoops. So, if I can be recognized by Dana White as an MMA expert, with at the time I think we had 600 subscribers on YouTube, I sure as shit would think that you would have seen what we have posted by now about you because that stuff gets actually a lot more views than the stuff that I do on MMA on Combat Corner. Swoops, now a broadcaster, she ended her ex thread by calling Stephen A. Smith a coward and saying, I'm ready to go on his show. Stephen A., do not take the bait. Do not take the bait. She needs you a lot more than you need her. Do not provide her your platform, not on ESPN, not on the Stephen A. Smith show on your podcast. Do not provide Cheryl Swoops with a platform. She doesn't deserve it. She wants the platform because she's otherwise unimportant in the grand scheme of things. We only talk about her because she continues to slander and denigrate Caitlin Clark, for which now she is taking complete ownership of her slander and her disrespect. Slander, I mean, it's slander because you know what? I'm sorry, slander. I, I use the word slander because her initial three comments about Caitlin Clark when she was on Gill's Arenas, Arena when she was still at Iowa was that she was 25, takes 40 shots a game, and is on an extra season because of COVID to break the record for points. Which all three of those were flat out false. Three lies. That's what slander is. Slander is when you make a statement that is false, that you know to be false, and it is a lie. And she knew it was a lie. She's not that dumb. 
I'm not going to take away her, comp- her. I'm not going to sit here and say the woman has no intelligence. She knew exactly what she was saying. Never thought she would get called out on it. I'm sure when she said it. But we damn sure know that those were lies and that was slander. Don't take the bait, Stephen A. Smith. She benefits from being on first take a whole lot more than you benefit from having her. And unless you are ready to undress her sorry ass, verbally, of course, on your show, it's not worth it. Nor is it worth it to have her on your podcast. It's not worth it. Because unless you're willing to undress her publicly to her face, and challenge her on all the bullshit out of her mouth. It's not worth it. She's going to play victim. She's going to cry bully. She's going to cry a whole bunch of shit. She calls you a coward. How exactly are you a coward because you gave an opinion on her ridiculous commentary? <clears throat> I. <clears throat> she says in this ex-tirade, you talk about whomever and whatever you want to on your podcast, correct? So why can't I? Also, did you listen to the entire podcast? Nope. I have a personal relationship with these players, and they deserve recognition as well. Get the fuck out of here. I'm sorry. I highly doubt you have a personal relationship with Lexi Hull, who you went way above to to really prop her up. Yeah, she had a great game that game. She hit all those threes that she hit. But you really went out of your way to prop her up. And then you propped up Aaliyah Boston, who had, I think, eight points in that game and 15 boards. She, I think she had eight points and, like, nine assists. She had a good game. It wasn't otherworldly. Kelsey Mitchell dropped 28 in that game. You know who dropped 29? Caitlin Clark. You know who had 10 assists? Caitlin Clark. What are we talking about here? So, yeah, you have the right to talk about whoever you want on your podcast. You you have the right. You absolutely have that right. <clears throat> you know what people expect from you? Is that you actually provide actual objective commentary when you're speaking about a team that is literally carried by that player. Would you talk about the Cleveland Cavaliers when LeBron played for the Cavs and not mention LeBron? Would you talk about the Miami Heat when he played for the Heat and not mention LeBron? Would you talk about the Lakers right now without mentioning LeBron? If you did, you would be the biggest fucking hater on the face of planet Earth. I don't even like LeBron, but you cannot possibly mention any team he plays for or has played for without mentioning his name while he was there. You could not mention the Chicago Bulls and say, damn, them Bulls are great. Tony Kukoc, amazing. Dennis Rodman, woohoo. Luke Longley, they're all there. And I'm not going to mention Michael Jordan. Or I don't know, the Los Angeles Lakers when Magic was there. I'm going to mention James Worthy, Byron Scott, Kurt Rambis. I'm not going to mention Magic. I'm going to mention the Boston Celtics <clears throat> when Larry Bird played. Let me mention Dennis Johnson, Danny Age, and Robert Parrish. But I'm not going to mention Larry Bird. So, yes, you have the right. But I don't want to hear that you have a personal relationship with every player on the Indiana Fever, because if that was the case, maybe you'd actually talk a little bit more, a little bit more nicely about that team. Oh, yeah, shit, that makes that's right. You'd actually have to compliment Caitlin Clark if you did that. Because that entire team right now is where it is right now because of her. I did a deep dive into how many wins the you know this year. Caitlin Clark, they're 13 and 16. Last year they had 13 wins. They got 11 more games. My guess is they're going to finish with probably 20, 21 wins, which will be seven, eight games better than last year. Even if they finish at 18 and 22, 19 and 21, that's still five to six games better than they were last year. <clears throat> but what you ignore <clears throat> is that this year. They, in their 13 wins, 11 of those are by single digits. 
11 of them are very close games. They have one blowout and then one that they won by like an 11 or 12. In that 12-point win, Caitlin Clark had like 29. If she doesn't play, they lose. I only saw in my deep dive, there was only one game, one game in which they would have won that game with or without Kaylin Clark because she didn't play that great and the margin was enough that it wouldn't have made a difference. One game. So, of her th- 13 wins, if you remove Kaylin Clark from any of those 12 other wins, they lose all those games. Whether it's points, points and assists, points, and assists, rebounds. 12 of those 13 wins, they'd lose those games without Caitlin Clark. So this team realistically could literally be sitting right now, right now, at 1-28. and Now, is that realistic? Probably not. They'd probably be more like 5-24, and 6-23. and They damn sure wouldn't be 13-16 and right now. Damn sure wouldn't be. So when you sit here and you talk about players on teams and you talk about teams, and you leave out the best player on the team when you're doing a narrative and sitting here saying you have a per- so you have a personal relationship with Leah Boston. When did you hang out with Leah Boston? What's your personal relationship? We know you have a personal infatuation with Angel Reese. We know that. We know why. But when did you have this personal relationship with Angel a- Aaliyah, Aaliyah Boston or I don't know, Kelsey Mitchell? How many conversations have you had with Kelsey Mitchell? I know you don't have no relationship with Lexi Hall. Get the fuck out of here. It will be hard to not compliment her after that game because she did go six for seven from three or six for eight from three, and she had 21 points in that game, I believe it was, 22 points. But in that same game, the one that Caitlin Clark played in, she had 29. I'm sorry, was that the – that was the Seattle game. My bad. She had 23. She had 23 and nine. It was the game before she had 29 and 10. They don't win that game without Caitlin Clark. Like, what are you talking about, dude? <clears throat> I'm sorry for the cough. My, my apologies. Sloops was getting started. Do you talk about them or others in the league and give them their props? She can. I hope y'all take all this energy to the polls and vote. What the fuck is she talking about? No, we don't. Because you know what? We don't watch other teams play because they're not enjoyable to watch. They're not enjoyable games to watch. They're missed layup factories. We've explained this a thousand and one times. The WNBA is not a good product to watch on a consistent basis. Less you have a great player. Less you have Caitlin Clark. I watched the Las Vegas Aces Chicago Sky game today, and the team shot a combined 37% from the field. The best player in the world, according to many, Asia Wilson was 8 for 28. Angel Reese was 4 of 16. A combined 12 of 44 between the two of them. This game, although it was exciting at the end, was a layup factory of misses. It's not an it's not an appetizing game to watch for men. There's a reason men gravitate to Caitlin Clark. There's a reason that more men watch the WNBA than women. And the reason is Caitlin Clark. <clears throat> and then there we're watching her games. We're not watching the Atlanta Dream play the Washington Mystics. We're not watching that. Will I watch other games occasionally? Sure. Am I that attentive to them? No. Are most people attentive to them? No. But please. Oh, she also said, Stephen A. Smith, by the way, you're new to this. I'm true to this. No, you're not. You're not true to this. Because if you were true to this, you'd be true to the improvement of the WNBA. The goal is to have the league get better, right? If the goal was to have more people watch the game, 
you as a former player who no longer has a dog in this race would be bigging up Caitlin Clark Knight like no end. The same way you big up Angel Reese, despite the fact you said she should have gone back to college. You did say that on Gil's Arena, too. You said that Angel Reese should go back to school to work on her post game because you know that she has no post game. Yet you still call her your rookie of the year, despite the fact that I mean, Caitlin Clark leads the league in assists, is, is average, I mean, has had 10 double doubles herself with assists. And you're going to sit here. And you're gonna tell me this is the reason Kayla Clark has actually been having three double doubles with rebounds and rebounds and points. She has three double doubles with rebounds and points. One of those happened to be a triple double. There's the reason that Angel Reese doesn't have a double double with points and assists because assists are actually harder to get than rebounds. Everyone knows it because you're reliant on someone else making a basket. Yesterday. Clark had eight assists. She had seven wide open shots that she set up missed. Three layups. <clears throat> wide open. You rely on someone else to hit a bucket. But this is a joke. He's a coward. Look, I'm not the biggest Stephen A. Smith fan. I find him entertaining at times. Other times I find him a little bit over the top. Some people may say the same thing about me, that I can be over the top. I have no problem with that. But I can't. Like, this is ridiculous. I'm sorry. I'm trying to refresh this crap so I can actually re read this again because at the end there's something here in this little article. It says here, Saving her most scathing comments for last. Not sure what he thought he was doing. I'm ready to get on his show, coward. Don't take the bait, Stephen A. The same way you got undressed by Monica McNutt and didn't have the balls to go back at her on first take because of what you thought, what would probably happen to you, which is you'd probably either be suspended or potentially fired because if you went real on Monica McNutt, you could have exposed her for who she is. You didn't because you're nice, nicer than me. And they would, as crazy as it sounds, they'd probably defend McNutt over you and protect her over you. Do not bring Cheryl Swoops on any show you are on unless you are prepared to take her out and expose her for the fucking fraud and phony that she is. But again, we'll see. Because only person, only one person needs the other. Stephen A doesn't need Cheryl Swoops. Cheryl Swoops needs Stephen A. Cheryl Swoops needs all of us to make her important. And we've done that. We've done it. We've called her out. But you know what's done for her? It's kept her in the news. It's kept her in the ticker. And I'm doing it right now. Because she keeps on saying complete and utter bullshit. But hey, you know what? It is what it is. We have to call it out. We have to say what it is. But don't invite her on your show. Don't make that mistake. Because unless you're ready to destroy her on that show. And preferably on ESPN First Take. Don't do it. Because all it does is benefit her. It does not benefit you. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Love to hear what you got to say. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell. Come on now.